Hi, Bloody Recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a comedy movie, The Brass Teapot. Please support the channel by subscribing and liking. Our goal is to get the first thousand subscribers in the shortest possible time. Keep your eyes open and stay focused. John's morning with Alice begins, as always, with a discussion of the problems in their financial situation. They dream of a million dollars to lie on the bed all day. John goes to work on his old bicycle, and the action takes place in the town of Lawrence Springs. He arrives at the office where he is going to sell the stale television warranties today. Alice is putting on her makeup and practicing her speech for the job, that she is a leader and has had no experience as a supervisor. The boss reprimands John for poor sales results, and Alice is already arriving at her future job, where she fails her speech and is rejected. Ernie. The landlord of the house, comes to Alice for the monthly payment, but dreams of her while she looks for the check. John arrives, threatened by Ernie that the lawn is not mowed today. John promised her to go to dinner, tonight, but he found a coupon in the men's room. So fast food tonight, I am the house. While John is playing Saints Row, Alice calculates that when Ernie cashes the check, they will be left with exactly this much. They go to their rich friends Peyton and Ricky's party, where they are a little shy because of their clothes because nothing was said about the dress code. John has a drink at the bar, and the guy from the school just doesn't recognize him and leaves. Alice meets her friends, Louise and Chuck, the guys behind the counter discussing how at the last party Chuck wanted to go to the bathroom but because of the jerk who closed in, he hid his feces in the vegetable garden. It turns out John was in the bathroom. Louise tells me that she needs to pay all of her mother's hospital bills, and they didn't give her a stipend, so she's depressed. The guys are partying hard, but the pattern is that everyone sucks in the morning. After vomiting, the guys head to the store and believe that things will get better, but at an intersection a redneck bumps into them. The cop explains that someone just cut down the sign, and Alice notices that a grandmother outside the antique shop has picked up a gold teapot and quickly heads inside. Inside, she sees Granny, putting the kettle on the table. Alice immediately switches to disguise mode, examining the first object that comes to hand. Alice refuses Granny's help to find anything worthwhile, and John comes over and asks her to go to the diner, but she asks him to supposedly look for antiques so she can get on television. Granny shows Alice a pendant with her still young on it. Alice compliments her and Granny's phone rings. Alice immediately comes to the teapot, which she grabs and starts running away. She jumps into Johnny's car and they take off. He's not happy with what she did, of course, but they're poor as it is and they're coming home. The next day, Joni is talking to a colleague about the boss affair, and while Alice is trying to get to another job interview, she accidentally sparks herself and the kettle lid twitches, and when Alice opens it, she finds 200 bucks there. She decides to burn herself again, and there's another 700 bucks. She immediately begins to injure herself, even breaks the locker door, and bills fly out of the kettle. Johnny is fired from his job at this time and returns home, where there is a mess and Alice is lying on the bed with her wounds out. She jokes to him that someone is in the house, but after calming down Alice reveals that she is fine. John tells her that he was fired, but Alice asks him not to be discouraged and punches him in the face, saying that the teapot gives money when one of them is crippled. John thinks it is a prank and she put the money there in advance, but when she punches him in the balls, money comes flying out a fountain and the sound of beating can be heard from the house. Alice promises to make them a million and get out of this shithole of poverty, but John says it could end badly, Alice sleeps with the teapot. She wakes up and finds a note from John, this could have ended badly. He arrives at the antique shop where Alice stole it, but the store is closed. In the car he takes the teapot, but experiencing fear he drops it and brings it to television, where the presenter estimates the value of the teapot at $5,000, and a guy from the Far East, recognizing the teapot, puts a mark on the map. John comes home with a teapot, they make a pact to make a million and stop, they start hurting in different ways burning their hands over fire, beating tattoos, getting Brazilian waxing, going to the dentist without anesthesia, putting the money in the barrel, Alice offers to put it in the bank, but how do they explain it to the IRS? They already have $194,200, Alice suggests he earn some more in the bedroom, she calls him to spank her, but he hits like a wimp, she takes matters into her own hands, and the kettle shakes from the money, and dancing the striptease makes her a little dizzy. They make love, 
which is noticed by a passing man. They are smoking in the field and Alice asks John to be nice to her mother. At the table, the mother tries to find out how they got so much money so quickly that they've managed to pay off all their debts, while John makes a jerk of himself by saying he's now a pimp and Alice sells her ovum. Mary and Joe wonder when Alice will finally have a baby, but she's clearly not happy with this regression. At home Alice asks John to take his time in reaching a million. There are many things of prime importance to buy during this period and a knock begins to come to their house. Opening the door, two Jews immediately punch John. They tell him that their grandmother had fought for decades for this teapot and demand it back. But while they're beating him up there's a round amount piling up in the teapot, and Alice says they sold the teapot and here's the cash. They ask where she got it. She says from her bra and takes off her blouse, and the men leave the house. They come to the library, where Alice finds a book about old magical things. Our teapot is there, it was created at the time of Christ's crucifixion. But after flipping through a few pages, Alice sees people hanging and while Joni is distracted she tears out the page too. She shows him the notes, where he reads that strange things have happened to the owners, and the next page is missing. She replies that it's an old book anyway and shouldn't have been read. She has a better suggestion, to go and have a blast with all her money. They buy themselves a new car, jewelry, and of course a mansion where they have fun, and Joni plays Saints Row on a new console in the jacuzzi. They throw a party where Alice makes new acquaintances, and Joni pours his vodka, which he set up production on, because that's what he dreamed of. That Chinaman comes over and introduces himself as Professor Lee. He tells them that they are in great danger, but Alice replies that they have no teapot and tells them to get lost, and slamming the door loudly, they tell the guests that they are pesky boy scout girls with cookies. They dine at a restaurant with neighbors and decide to pick up the tab, but when they see how much is there, John goes into the bathroom with her bag, Alice tells them that he took hemorrhoid cream, and they hear screaming from the bathroom. At home Alice starts beating John, but a guy is watching them through the window, he rings the doorbell, it turns out to be Ernie, who throws Johnny a bottle and rips the teapot out of Alice's hands. He soon runs out of the house and tells Alice how he used to love her in high school, but this clown ruined her. Ernie suggests that Johnny play soccer like he did in high school, but he throws the kettle in the road and runs him over, and to Alice and Johnny's surprise he is perfectly intact. They arrive at Dr. Lee's address and he asks them to give him the teapot, he will hide it so that no one will find it for all its past owners have failed to cope with it. Alice doesn't trust him and doesn't want to give him the teapot, telling John that they have everything under control. She and Peyton are walking around the mall and want to have a cocktail, but there is no one at the register, and when Peyton calls the clerk, Louise gets out from under the register. She hid when she noticed the girls, she just didn't want to embarrass her place of work. At night Alice wakes up to the sound of broken glass, they see the Jews back again, Alice pushes John out the door and while he threatens them with a chandelier, the girl walks out with the kettle, the Jews don't want to take it, only will take the money, because they've had the kettle too long, and if she weren't stupid she'd be playing mahjong on a shizlong by now, and also that the stop sign was cut down by that granny hoping for the worst so she could get money for other people. When the Jews start to leave, the girl and John pounce on them, but John is immediately knocked against the wall and the girl rolls after them down the stairs screaming that it's her money, but the Jew knocks her out with a club. In the morning when John wakes up, he hears Alice crying, she's hysterical that they took everything they had, and Peyton comes in and complains about their lawn and that it's time to do something about it, Kettle starts giving less money than before, only ones or fives. John says they need help. In the evening they arrive at a bar, where John has a drink and heads for the biggest bully to smack him around. In the morning, John is greeted by a neighbor who laughs at the sight of him, and Dr. Lee shows up behind him and tells him that their change process has already begun, the teapot absorbing their inner power. He visits Chuck for an old friendship, but Chuck sees John's face and asks him to stop doing what they started. While Alice is sitting in the park, a skateboarder falls nearby and Alice gets money in the kettle. At home, John is greeted with a neighbor, and Alice tells him that others nearby are paid for their pain, too, and they start going to fights and deliveries and the money reappears in big mountains, but this time they hide it in a safe. Alice goes crazy on the road and wants to run over a homeless man, but John cranks the wheel and they go around the poor man, they soon quarrel, 
and when Alice gets out of the car, there is money in the kettle. She realizes what an inner pain it is, she tells John that she's better than him and they shouldn't be together, and the teapot gives her a large sum for it. Then she asks Joni to do the same, to break her heart, because he has secrets, it turns out four years he kissed Peyton and still thinks of her when he kisses Alice, she is happy with the new amount of money, and John realizes that there is no more control over the teapot. At home they tell each other secrets while getting a lot of money for it, but when Alice tells him that she sucked Arnie off three years ago, the teapot just fountains money from John's moral pain. They arrive at Arnie's house, where John tells his girlfriend that Alice sucked him off and gives him a punch in the face for it, and Arnie takes the teapot with a lot of money in it, but Alice takes it away and they leave, Kettle again begins to give them less money for moral pain and they begin to tell all the black secrets to their neighbors and acquaintances, even telling the ex-boss's wife about his intrigues and affairs. They are about to go to Alice's sister, Mary, to tell her husband that one of the children is not his, but at the last moment Alice pulls herself together and simply declares that she is jealous of their family, and John promises to become a vegetarian, but at home Alice is pissed that they go back to the past and offers to kill a rapist or a drug dealer, but digging a grave in the woods beforehand. John refuses to help her and noticing how embittered she has become, he just leaves. He turns to Dr. Lee for help, it turns out they've gone too far, and there is only one way out, return the teapot themselves, or he will just follow up with the next owners of the teapot and ask them to return it. Maybe someone will listen, he home Alice in the reflection of the mirror sees an old granny instead of herself. She finds a torn page from a book on the bed, John finds it. She promises him that they will return the teapot, but John does not believe her and saying that he does all such things to the end, falls out the window with the teapot. Alice tries to bring him to his senses, but when emotion breaks out how much she loves him, John wakes up and again asks Alice for promises that they will get rid of the teapot. At night, someone sneaks into the house, it turns out Arnie has stolen the teapot, Alice asks to leave everything as it is but John wants to take the teapot and return it to Dr. Lee personally. In the morning they arrive at Arnie's house, where they find bloody papers with a hammer inside. Arnie appears who has discovered the secret of their wealth, his head is blown off by the teapot. Arnie and John get into a fight, but Brandy shows up and they bring them to their knees, saying it's time to say goodbye to their lives. Suddenly the Jews burst into the house and demand the kettle, but when Arnie refuses, he is shot in the stomach, and then Brandy and the men have a shootout in which everyone dies and the house is completely filled with money. They take the teapot along with the money, and in the street Dr. Lee is waiting for them, to whom Alice gives the teapot, and he tells them that thousands of people have owned the teapot, but only a few manage to overcome themselves and give it back. Alice sends Louise a check for $250,000, she is just overjoyed. Alice is pregnant, and they drive to the Mexican border in an old car, and Lee throws the teapot to the bottom of the sea to hide its magical power forever. Support the channel by subscribing, like and turn on notifications. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.